Hi Gospel Guitarist here with another installment of Audio Tech. Today we're going to discuss a little bit about power amplifiers. After showing you the, uh, the house rack in the last video, I just thought I'd bring out this rack. I keep running into more pieces of equipment to show and talk about. <laughs> Every time I think I'm done, I go, oh, forgot to do this. So power amps. Uh, they're very simple on the front. And uh, this is my rack setup. I use the uh, the Behringer 15 band, as I mentioned in my video earlier, um, for EQing the monitors on stage. So as you can see, I can have two separate um, monitor systems. And then I have uh, one power amp at the moment. Um, it always would be helpful to have more than one of these available in case one goes down. Um, you can just move the cables and you've got a backup in your rack. Uh, but be mindful these things weigh a ton Okay, today they're coming out with the newer models. They are they are dropping weight quickly um, And I would advise saving up for for a newer model um, By some of these companies out there where their power amps are very powerful and yet they're very lightweight um, The older amps just are really heavy This one's not too bad, but it, it does weigh it will work you out if you got to carry it for any distance so you're gonna want to have um, some proper carts to transport your equipment on. Um, <clears throat> now you can run it where your front of house is running left and right for each side of the amplifier, but um, and more often than not, um, a lot of people run it the way I'm running mine, where I just uh, daisy chain the front of house speakers. I don't run a stereo setup, I run a mono setup. It's a lot easier to deal with, and everybody hears everything. Um, so this side is running the front of house. So when I turn, usually you basically want to run them wide open anyway, so the amp can breathe and you got plenty of headroom. Um, but if you find it's just overpowering for your situation, you can always back it off. Um, I almost never run them past the nine o'clock or three o'clock position on my, for anything I've done and I've done shows up to 300 people. Um, this side I'm using for the monitors, uh, and it also powers two monitors. And also on the front of your amps, you're going to find clip lights, um, signal lights, and any other extras on mine. I have a special processing system that Yamaha makes for Yamaha speaker systems, and that lights on when it's engaged. But that's pretty much it, on and off switch. So basically, you know, protect lights and temperature lights. There's all kinds of warning lights on the front of your amps. <laughs> so that's pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, why don't we swing it around and take a look at the back. Okay, on the back of the amp, you're gonna find a lot of options for inputs and outputs. Um, all amp manufacturers uh, generally will give you quarter inch and mic line inputs. They will usually give you quarter inch and um, <clears throat> these twist lock connectors, okay, for your outputs. Now this amp has a couple other options which are nice, um, but uh, another thing that you'll find on the back of your power amps is your, on, uh, most of them are set up for bridging. You can run them in stereo or you can run them in parallel. So my way of looking at it is bridge is just running all the power of both amps. So you have a really high output, but it's in mono. When you run it in stereo, you're, it's your typical left and right division of the power amp. And in parallel, you're actually using the two power amps separate from each other. So they're running independently. Um, on this power amp, uh, it actually has a low cut and a frequency where you can select where you want it cut off. So if you have a lot of standing low frequencies in a room, I can actually, you know, dial off like at 110 or so. If I'm having standing waves at 80 or 90, you know, um, hertz, I can dial them out of the system right here without even touching my EQ. Um, it has a subwoofer setting and an off setting as well. Um, not all of them have that. And then I have my uh, YS processing on and off 
on the Yamaha system, which is designed for your Yamaha um, systems. I have Yamaha speakers, so I leave that on all the time, gives them a little bit more response. So uh, as you can see, you have different types of speaker connections that you're going to want to take into account when you're building your sound system. Some other things you need to consider is the actual output power of your amplifier. Uh, you want to know what you're going to be doing. What are you covering? Are you a rock band? Are you just an acoustic ensemble? Um, I cover basically acoustic ensemble type stuff to, and, and, and speakers. So you have you know, someone evangelizing. And that's what I do with it. I don't cover any you know, rock band type scenarios. <laughs> this, this would probably be just used for the monitors alone if, if it was a rock setup. And I'd have another big, huge power amp with a whole lot more power than this thing gives out to power the front of house. Plus, I'd have subwoofers and power amps for those. So you really need to design your system based on what it is that you're doing. Um, and then buy the appropriate speakers and power amps so that they match. So the output and the ohm ratings on your outputs of your amplifier will match up to the specifications of your speakers. And you want to be careful, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm running two speakers on the A output for the front of house, and I'm running two speakers on the B output to run my monitors. So I have to know what this thing will handle before it blows up on me as far as how many ohms, what the ohm ratings are on the, on the power amp, and what the ohm ratings are on my speakers, not just individually, but when I pair them up. So when I take, all my speakers are 8 ohm. So if I run two 8 ohm speakers on front of house, chained together in series, so I have one speaker here on one side, one seat over here, and the cable goes from the power amp to the left speaker, from the left speaker over to the right speaker. That would be in series. In parallel would be running this output to the left speaker and this output to the right speaker. Um, in series, what you do is you take the, two, the 8 ohm speakers and you divide it by 2 so that will give me a 4 ohm load on this amplifier and that's as low as this amplifier will go. But if I had two 4 ohm speakers I could not line them up in series because then I would have a 2 ohm load and this, and this will shut down. It will go into protect mode and, and quit. It won't power it. Um, to 16 ohm speakers will run at 8 ohms. So you have to look into all of the different mathematics that are involved in it. There's a million sites out there um, that can go in detail with all of those types of wiring schematics. But you want to read up on the power amps that you're interested in buying. And once you decide on how much power you actually need, how big of a house are you planning to work in, um, and, and then match the speaker systems appropriate or vice versa. Um, if you're going to do a big house, you're going to need a lot of big speakers. So you're going to need a lot of big power amps. <laughs> um, if you're running smaller venues like I do, you can go with a smaller speaker system and a smaller power amp. And you can even get away with one like I am here. I'm running four speaker systems on two sides of one power amp. So, and it serves me very well. I have no problems with level at all. Matter of fact, I never have maxed the system out. So, uh, but that's just a little bit of things that you need to think about when it comes to designing your sound system and what you may be come across on the back of a power amp. If your power amp is built into your mixing board, then you will find these types of outputs and connections on the back of your mixer. And they will look like these. These would be your speak on connectors for your speakers and quarter inch connectors. These inputs would not be there because they're internal. They're already inside the mixer. But you may have some bass roll off and some subwoofer connections on the back of your mixer. And you'll probably have a fader just dedicated straight, strictly for your, your, um, your subwoofer. So it would power that as well. And then you have to look into how your mixer will handle, you know, what kind of speaker systems you need to, to buy for your mixer and match it that way. But just keep these things in mind and keep them aware. Uh, be aware of them. So that covers the power amp section. Uh, hope you found it helpful and um, be real mindful of these things because you don't want to blow up speaker systems by using the wrong power outputs. 
and it's not bad to have more power here than your speakers can handle. People always think you're going to blow up speaker systems if you have something that's more powerful than your speaker. All that's going to do is give you headroom so you have less clipping. So the clipping will destroy your speaker. It's not the amount of power that's going into it clean. You can run a speaker pretty hot if it's clean power. But once it starts distorting on you, now you're going to burn out speakers and power amps. So it's, it's not a bad idea. Actually, from what I understand, it's worse to have an underpowered speaker system because then you will push it into, you're trying to get more power out of your sound system and you're distorting the power amp, which is distorting your speakers, and then things melt down. And people are like, I fried my speaker system and my power amp was underpowered. How'd I do that? And it was because of the distortion in the wire. You just got it too hot. Distortion equals heat, and heat melts things. So we don't want to do that. So make sure you have a power amp that's way more than sufficient for your sound system. And uh, be willing to spend the extra money on these guys and don't go cheap because your whole sound, your whole gig depends on your power amps. So you really want to make sure you got quality there. So that's it. Thanks for watching and have fun building your system.